So let's begin the first session with a presentation by Vice President Jim Elliott titled IT Market Trends, Senior Vice President Kayon Gyeong regarding 3D VNAND, the future of Flash, will follow right after. And lastly, the Samsung SSD leadership presentation by Jim Elliott will continue. Please welcome presenters with a warm round of applause. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Much more comfortable for me, hopefully more comfortable for you as well. Again, as I just explained, my name is Jim Elliott, and I'm the Memory Marketing uh, VP for Samsung Semiconductor in America HQ. It is my honor to be here to present to you today at the 2014 Global SSD Summit. My first presentation, you were lucky or unlucky enough to hear from me twice today. My first presentation will be over covering what we call IT market trends. So let's get started, shall we? So let's think about the IT growth drivers that the industry has been experiencing over the last several years. We've gone from a PC era in the 90s to a wired internet era in 2000 to a mobile internet era recently moving into what we call the IoT, Internet of Things or Internet of Everything. We're looking now at 50 billion devices connected by 2020. But the key is, let's think about the impact that the mobile internet is having on our lives and on society. What evidence do we have that the mobile internet is really taking shape across the globe? Think about going to a concert, right? Back when I was growing up, this is what everybody did at a concert. You had a lighter, you held it up, you waved it around. Now in the era of the mobile internet, people pulled their smartphones up. Perhaps you can do that a little bit later tonight. Movie night, that time where the family comes together and watches TV, right? Well, not anymore. In the mobile internet era, everyone is watching their own screen. Did you know that it is possible to tell somebody's marital status by observing how they utilize some of the devices of this mobile internet era? Dinner conversation, you can see, again, completely changed. And now back to that marital status. Married or dating? This couple here, hmm, let's think about it. Checking Facebook, checking Twitter, checking email, probably married. The single couple, no phones, wine glasses. Again, think of the impact. This is my favorite example, the papal inauguration. Same photo, same event, right? Exact same place, same location. Think of this as a time machine of sorts. 2005. Now, can you imagine what this is gonna look like in 2013? The sea of mobile devices. This is really what embodies that mobile internet as we segue from that into the internet of things. So think about your own lifestyle now with these connected devices, digital cameras, smartphones, tablets, watches, ultrabooks. And now think about the impact of social networking that's really the, the glue that brings a lot of these devices together. Facebook, more than 9 billion page views per day now. These slides need to be updated on almost an hourly basis based on how fast the numbers are growing. Kakao Talk, right? Local Korean uh, message service, more than 5 billion messages per day and over 500 million tweets per day. That's a lot of data. 
Think about now the time that it took to reach 50 million users. It took television 13 years to get there. Internet, four years. Facebook, three and a half. Draw something, 50 days. So that pace of change is increasing dramatically. In fact, 91% of adults have mobile phones within arm's reach 24-7. In case you got that work phone call or you need to check that Facebook status, it's right there in the mobile internet era. Now think about this proliferation of devices all around this central data center or server and the infrastructure requirements that that amount of users, that amount of data starts to drive. We call this the era of data explosion or the data explosion era. Think about that mobile traffic growth for a minute. More connections, more users, faster speeds, and more video. By 2018, we're looking at 10 billion devices or more generating 190 exabytes of traffic. Now, 190 or an exabyte is a rather esoteric term, so let's give you an analogy here. Five exabytes represents the entire amount of data created from the dawn of civilization until 2003. And then we're going to be creating 190 in just one year. One exabyte, for anyone who doesn't have an exabyte drive on their laptop yet, can store about 13,000 years of HD video or almost 5 trillion ebooks. So looking at this data explosion from a mobile traffic standpoint, we're looking at a 100 times increase in mobile traffic from 2011 to 2020. And commensurate with that, from a storage standpoint, about a 21x increase in IT storage requirements to connect and move all this data around with these billions of users and billions of devices. Think about YouTube now. More video is uploaded to YouTube in one month just one month, than the major three U.S. networks created in 60 years. That's the pace of change that the industry is experiencing right now. Now let's look at this new data storage era. Some of the key IT concerns. TCO is an acronym that we love to throw around, right? Total cost of ownership. Power consumption, space limitation, quality of service. These are all sort of core to the CIO and CTO's line for infrastructure planning. Obviously, you want less power, you want a smaller footprint to take advantage of finite real estate, and you need higher performance. So how is this possible? With NAND flash memory, and that's what we're here to talk to you about today. So think about how NAND has disrupted so many different devices that you're all so familiar with. Just a few years ago, things were tape-based, and then they went to hard drive-based. CE devices have been revolutionized, revolutionized by NAND flash. Think about now the data center and server space where stacks of hard drives can be replaced with a single SSD. We'll give you much more detail on this later on this afternoon. And I like to use the word ubiquity, NAND flash ubiquity. It's everywhere. NAND flash is now an integral part of virtually every CE device out there and is now making significant roads into that data center and server infrastructure in order to power all those CE devices. So think about the NAND market growth for a minute here. We're looking at 50 billion one gigabyte equivalents in 2014 and you can see that growth continuing up into the right. You can see the distribution by end application becoming more diversified. SSD now solidly in the number two position with the expectation that that will increase in the future. Building on that from an SSD standpoint and a PC space, we're looking at about a 5x growth from a gigabyte perspective from 14 to 18. And look at the data center server enterprise side, over 8x increase, again, as SSD continues to evolve and improve, it will continue to disrupt more and more industries. So let's talk for a minute about Samsung's leadership in the NAND flash memory industry. So we've got about 34%, 35% market share in the NAND space, about 47% market share in the SSD space currently. 
give you a couple milestones. In 2006, anybody buy one of these PCs? The world's first SSD-based PC. It had a 32 gigabyte SLC SSD in it. About 14 bucks a gigabyte. Love to sell you some more of those if anyone is interested. 2008 launched the world's first MLC-based SSD. Again, reducing that cost for broader, more widespread adoption. 128 gigabytes now, starting to make inroads into the PC space for the low, low price of five bucks a gigabyte. Then we move into the three-bit era in 2012. This was two years ago. Continuing to drive prices down, densities up. 500 gigabytes now, starting to make a real, starting to really chase HDDs in the PC space breaking the one dollar per gigabyte barrier, very significant milestone. Technology complexity. One of the big challenges that the industry has upon us now from an ant flash perspective is that technology is reaching diminishing returns. Therefore, another approach is needed for the future for sustainable technology innovation. CapEx, accordingly, is becoming more expensive more expensive, more investments needed with, again, diminishing returns from a litho perspective. And at the same time, those gains that we've been getting where we could double density every year are starting to erode as well. So we do need another a new approach to build the foundation of the future on. So really the core here we want to talk about today is disruptive technology is what is required to satisfy capacity, cost, and reliability requirements. Was anyone in the audience here at the Flash Memory Summit in San Jose last year? Let's see, all right. A few, uh, few faithful folks out there. Nice to see you. We'll see you next month back in, in San Jose. So last year at the Flash Memory Summit in August 6th of 2013 in, in California, Samsung introduced the world's first 3D VNAND Flash memory, I had the, the honor of helping to uh, get some of that presentation, and, and I think the response was, was overwhelming, given the, uh, the core value proposition that SSD really brings to the table. So we are extremely excited about this, this new technology.